Hey, good morning, mister. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm all right. Just a little tired. He had to do chores. Yeah. Yeah. In the club. We're in the club. Okay, so we, we are uh, recording now, so. I might call them and be right back. So we got to watch our mouths, okay? Because this is mm -hmm. going to be saved. <laughs> Yeah, so like I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you through, I'm going to share a screen with you, uh, run you through some uh, examples and some some finer points about, about additional research on on the library databases and other, other sites, things to watch out for to make it easier on you. And um, probably going to then a little bit about source credibility or evaluating the quality of sources and and then probably turn you loose for a little while so that you can do some research while I'm still present. Um, on Wednesday, I'll be in my office at 930 for our class time as I was last week, although I was a little late last week um, for anyone who wants to come and talk to me. All right. Okay, so I'm going to begin with sharing the screen. And this is going to be the boring day, just in case you guys didn't know that, all right? Mm -hmm. Just give me a few. All right, so we're going to start off in Comnet, and I'm just going to, have you guys been to the library databases yet? Yeah. You have. Okay, have you been trained on them at all? Yeah, my FYE class. FYE class. All right. So you can tell me if this is going too fast or too slow for you. All right, Eliza. Mm -hmm. I try to take more of a um, efficiency approach so that we just sort of learn how to use them without without wasting too much time or energy. Some of this might be rehashing for you, Melissa. Maybe new for you. If you guys don't need this. Um, this instruction because you've already had it and you feel free to just tell me tell me this is not new to you and you don't need it and i will stop okay so i actually found like on blackboard your it was in readings about research yeah. and it had a lot of information on it i was able to go in a little bit this weekend and kind of play around yeah i mean that was guidelines for first of all exploratory re mostly exploratory research and then how do you do real research from there right so um, that guideline talks about the idea that at first you don't really know what you're looking for, at least not usually exactly. And the first the first hurdle is to try to find out how to say what it is you want to find, because the library databases work on keywords the same way that a Google search does. But if you don't have the right words, you're not going to find what you're looking for. And this is more problematic in database research because as you get into um, more professional and scholarly sources, they tend to use language that we don't necessarily have because they're experts writing for experts. And if you are a freshman in college or whatever, you're not necessarily an expert in the subject areas that you're researching yet. So you don't necessarily have the words that you need to find the articles that really are useful to you. Um, so one of the strategies is to start thinking of synonymous terms. And a lot of times exploratory research is more just about finding the vocabulary that lets you do better searches later than it is about actually finding the sources. It's kind of a multi-stage process, if that makes sense. So can you guys see my comnet up here right now? Yes. Okay, so I'm just going to get you into the library. You go to my library info, you click on MVCC library. And it immediately brings you to the database page. Um, I'm just going to expand that. All right, now on the database page, first of all, um, what you notice is you got a bunch of different databases. They're divided uh, first by Discipline, okay, over here, arts, language, and literature. Over here, health, science, and social science. Down below, we've got newspapers. We've got business and law journals. We've got history journals, okay. 
Um, we've got film here, and we've also got general magazines and journals here. Now, be aware that if you need help, okay, when you first open up, I don't, I don't see it on my screen here, but when I first opened up the library page this morning, um, there was a little, there it is, chat. Okay, so you can start a chat with one of the library um, research librarians. All right, and you can even do things like schedule an appointment. If you look up here, let's see, where is it? Right here, research appointments. You could schedule a consultation with a research librarian to help you. All right, I don't, I'm sure that would be an online conference, but um, whatever there, are, there are, they have great research strategies and they're really skillful researchers so i would encourage you guys if you get in trouble to use them um anyway in terms of exploratory research usually it's a good idea to begin with one of the more general databases because they contain articles from a lot of different disciplines okay so you can search one database and find information from medical from psychology from um engineering, sociology, and you don't get too, you don't get too narrowed down too quickly because you're still trying to figure out what it is you're talking about a lot of the times. So, uh, Melissa, you've got this idea about news and social and anxiety caused by news, right? And yes. you haven't quite narrowed it down yet. Is that correct? Yeah, I think I am going to focus on like social media news more than anything now. Yeah. So um, you have a little bit of a focus. It still might be a good idea for you to go into these general databases to see what's there. But at some point, probably your best sources are going to come from some of these databases over here. Um, such as psychology, psychology and behavioral science. There's another one called, where is it, Cyclit. I don't know if they still have it here. Maybe they don't still have it here. All right, they don't still have Cyclit, but the Psychology and Behavioral Science uh, database is gonna be focused on, you know, things, things related to how the brain works. And that might be useful to you. Oh, PsychInfo is right here. Okay, so that's another database on psychology. And in here, there'll be a sociology one as well. Um, here you can see Eric, educational resource information. If you have school related stuff that you wanna talk about. Um, now over here in the general databases list, we have some really huge ones that are probably the best starting place. Ones like Academic Search Premier, which is an enormous general database. And, um, See what's the other one? Okay, looks like they've gotten rid of this. some of these. Have changes have changed a little bit, but uh, JSTOR is an excellent one, focused mostly on humanities, also social sciences. High, high quality sources in JSTOR, um, and. SIRS research researcher is interesting because it not only provides you with um, with a good general database, it also provides you with lots of information on federal government, uh, government documents available through here, federal legislation documents available through here. So that's a good source for that kind of information. Opposing viewpoints is an interesting database. I'm just gonna open this one up quickly. Is this familiar to you guys at all? Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you seen opposing viewpoints? It doesn't seem to be working right now. Okay, there it goes. Opposing viewpoints is not a good source for scholarly resources. All right. It doesn't have great, it doesn't have great um quality articles, but what it does do that's really useful is it gives you a place where you can look at 
the issues, right? Um, you can browse for specific issues. You can search for issues. Um, and it also has lists of uh, various kind of hot topics. All right, see over here, it's got all, all the different issues. Um, and what it does is it prevents, it presents sources on both sides of the coin, so to speak. All right, so if you aren't sure what people are saying or what people think about particular issues, you can go there and get some kind of background information. Mostly that's uh, newspaper journalism. Uh, anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to go into Academic Search Premier and seems we're slow today. And we're just going to do a basic a basic search. I'm going to show you some of these tools and how they can be useful for you. Okay, guys. Um, so, all right. First of all, let's start with a basic search and some things to look out for. Okay, fear. We start searching fear, and you noticed I had a drop down list there of a bunch of different fear topics that become available immediately. Uh, first thing to note is that when you type in a general word like that for a search, what you're going to do is you're going to get probably an awful lot of results. Okay, we have 844,000 uh, documents that have the word fear available. Uh, it's important to note that when we're doing these keyword searches, they are being sorted by what the computer calls relevance. Okay, uh, that's the default. Um, algorithm for uh, most databases, including Google and whatnot. They find out how many times the keyword you searched is available in the article that you find, and they list them by that. Now, obviously, in Google, we have uh, advertised sources, paid spaces, paid listings that get higher up the list because they spend more money. And that's really rotten because now your research results are being determined by who can afford to say it, right? Um, on these databases, we don't have the problem of pay to play, but nonetheless, we still have a problem because the computer is sorting the quality and the value of the sources based on what you type in, which is really imperfect. So, for example, um, I want to search and and find articles on, say, fear of driving or fear of car accidents or something along those lines. If I type in fear, I get 850,000 articles about anything and everything related to fear, right? Now, the first problem is you don't know which article is going to be the one you really love, or you don't know which five articles are going to be the ones you actually use until you read them. And you can't read all of these. You can't even read all of these titles, not even close. So what we have to do is try to refine this search here down to a manageable number. And if you think about your internet research behavior, right? Um, do you guys ever scroll past the first page of hits when you're trying to find something? Mm -hmm. How far are you willing to go? Page two. Page two, okay, so that's 20, right? Really, it's the default setting is 10 per page. Um, so you're willing to look at 20 documents. So if you got 850,000, you don't know which 20 are the ones that might be useful to you. Um, we got to get that number down somewhere around 25 or so before we can really spend enough time with each article that we know whether or not it's worth reading. All right, this isn't even getting to the reading. All of the work of the research is done long before you start reading your articles because you don't want to waste your time reading things for no good reason. You better know that the source you have is worth reading before you read it. Um, so there are different ways to whittle it down. Obviously, we can narrow it down by adding and piling up keywords. All right, so let's say um, uh, car accidents. Right, and see what that does to affect our, our search. Okay, so now we're down from 800,000 to 6,500. 6, All right, that's a big, a big chunk that we've whittled it down. Still obviously way too many. Now I wanna show you something. Up here we have these Boolean operators, right? And, or, and not. And what they do is they control the relationship between the search words that you've posted, okay? so. 
when you use the word and, what you're doing is you're reducing the scope of, of the search so that the articles found will be ones which contain both keywords. <clears throat> the article doesn't contain both keywords, and not just necessarily in the title, but in the article itself, then it will not be a hit or it will be much lower down on your list of relevance, okay? If you use the word or, what it does is it says, I'll take an article that has either word, and what you see is that your search expands rather than contracts. See? So it's back up to 870,000. Right? So that's, that's, if you're having trouble with finding sources, and you want to use multiple synonyms, say fear or anxiety and car accidents might be an example, all right, where you're not sure what the right word is for what you're looking for, you can pile up synonyms by using the or search term, okay? And not is an exclusive term. And what it does is it says, I want all the articles related to fear, but not the ones that talk about car accidents because that's not that's not useful to me, okay? And you find that it doesn't help much, all right? So it removes those 6,000 that we had from the first search from the list of all articles about fear. You understand? Mm -hmm. So am I going too slow? No. You already know this stuff? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. All right. This is going to be a real quick lesson then. Uh, additional search terms, fear, and car accidents, and driving. Right. And we can just continue doing that. If you hit the plus minus key here, you can add as many rows as you want to narrow your search more precisely. That will only get you so far. But it's gotten us down now from 800,000 to 1,800, which is pretty good. Now, at this point, we can see if we're getting anywhere in the ballpark. And what we see is we've got one driving anxiety and fear in New Zealand, the relationship between driving cognitions and driving phobia. That's a psychological one. And Romanian Journal of Applied Science, good article. So, I mean, we're getting close here. The next thing we can do, we can look at putting filters on or limiters on it. All right. We've already got it limited to full text. Do you know what that means? Yeah, like articles that are complete, right? Well, it means the article is totally available to you right now. If you look uh, here, yeah. say this is a good article, if you click on the title, what it's going to do is it's going to bring you to an abstract of the article. See, not the whole article, just a summary of it. Um, but if you have a full text availability, it will give you the entire document, either in PDF form or maybe in... Um, maybe in HTML format. Um, now, the good thing about these articles when you find them is that you can use, um, you can use your highlight function, copy and paste, all right, so that you can borrow quotes without having to retype them. Very nice, very nice quick technique. Um, now, in terms of limiters, so, you know, again, we want to make this as easy as possible. Most research people are doing now is online. So, you know, you don't really go to the physical library and look at the printed documents unless you you find one online that is simply not available. Uh, I mean, you find one that's simply not available, but is absolutely essential. So if I click off the limit to full text, all right, for example, Here's an article, driving related fear, it does not have full text availability, all right? But it might be the perfect source, all right? So what we can do is we can go to driving related fear, we're gonna get the abstract, we're gonna get the author's names, we're gonna get the, the journal and source information, all right? And what we can do is we can do a catalog search we can ask the librarian if they can find that source for us. Clinical psychology review, I would expect to be a fairly common psych journal that would be available at a lot of different uh, university libraries. 
So I'd imagine it wouldn't be too hard to find that that article uh, if it if it turned out to be one that looked like it was really really essential to my research. As college freshmen, generally, you know, you don't need to be doing um, graduate level research. You don't need to be, you know. Uh, so looking around the country for people to send you printed copies of articles that exist only in one place. You know, I did a little bit of that when I was in grad school, um, but really right now it's more about learning how to find sources and use them than it is about finding the most, the most profound sources available. So you, know, you don't have to go that far, but know that that is a possibility, right? And then if you find an article that seems really useful, you can always do a catalog search um, of the 12 colleges, or you can ask the librarians if they can help you to find that source if it's really necessary for you. But we always start with the easy way. So we start with limit to um, full text so that we can get all the articles without getting out of our seats. We also wanna look at publication date. It's important that we stay current, okay? Usually what that means is last two years, depending on the field, all right? Um, certain fields are less uh, rapidly changing than others. Let's say 2016, four years. Um, just by their nature, okay? obviously in English or in history, uh, things don't change a whole lot very quickly. So an article that's 20 years old in, in the discipline of, of English or modern languages uh, wouldn't be that big a deal. But if you were a brain, if a brain surgeon and you were reading articles that were 20 years old on procedures for brain surgery, uh, nobody would want to have you as their doctor, you know? So currency, yeah. Um, so currency is kind of a problem or a concern relative to the different disciplines, right? If obviously, you know, computer technology, things are changing so fast you can't keep up with them. So currency is really essential, probably a little bit less so in psychology, but not a lot less so. Um, other fields, it's not as significant. So the, the ballpark figure is uh, the most recent two years generally is absolutely safe, okay? Beyond that, it kind of depends on the subject and depends on the discipline that you're doing your research and whether or not people think it's, um, whether or not people think it's, it's okay. All right, so we're gonna go here too years and here now we're bringing in things like phobia as opposed to anxiety uh, moderating role of emotional regulation strategies seat belts interesting cognitions and traffic accidents so now we're looking at cause and effect right how does the way we see the driving situation affect our level of safety as a driver do we cause accidents because we're afraid of accidents that's kind of interesting stuff okay um we're down to 209 sources which is really good all right uh we're limited to full text we're limited to um 2017 and later the other thing we can do is we can limit to peer-reviewed articles all right uh, we can even limit to only academic journals. Now, depending on how many you have and how difficult it is to find exactly what you're looking for, that may or may not be a good idea, all right? Because once you start setting limits to only academic journals, you're getting rid of a lot of basic information that might be useful. You're also getting rid of uh, pro perhaps professional publications, trade publications you can see down here. Uh, which don't necessarily apply with this particular subject, but which might apply with other subjects. Uh, we limit to academic journals, we limit to peer reviewed, and we're essentially saying that we're going to find the best, the best quality sources available. Academic journals are always peer reviewed. Most professional journals are peer reviewed. What that means is that 
those sources have an editorial staff which read and analyze the quality of the sources, the quality of the research of the authors before the articles are accepted for publication. Um, they're very different from what you might call a popular journal or magazine, which generally is a sort of on-demand writing situation where you've got a bunch of staff writers who are very good writers and perhaps very good researchers, but not necessarily experts in any particular field. The editor says, we need 500 words on X, go write me something, and that, that writer then goes out and does it. Um, the quality is extremely different between a scholarly source and a popular source. And I'm gonna show you a little bit about that today. Um, but anyway, while we are here, uh, once we get a source, all right, say we like this cognition and phobia one, you can bring it up, you can bring it up as, um, you can bring it up as full text if it's available. Now, you will have the ability to download it right and save it which is good because then you can work offline right you don't have to log in and go dig it up and dig it up in the library databases just because you want to work with it all right i would always encourage you to print i mean that's your option obviously ink is expensive um but it seems for me anyway my my pro everybody's process is different but my process um i like to lay out my articles where I can just grab them and look at them quickly and keep my writing on the screen so that um, I don't know, I don't work very well with a lot of tabs or tiled screens or anything like that. It just gets too cluttered in front of me that way. I need more space and I suppose I like the physical component of it. So I like to print my documents, highlight them by hand. It just seems to work better for me, probably just because I'm old. Anyway, um, when you have a PDF file, okay, you can print and download this way right here uh, inside this, inside the, the, I suppose it's, uh, well, no, I guess it's a, a, a the browser, but, um, and that's no problem. If you had um, Another variation of the article, what you don't ever want to do is you don't want to use the Chrome tabs to print. Okay? <laughs> if you print using your search engine's uh, toolbox here, what's going to happen is it's going to print everything on your screen. So you will end up with only about, you know, half to three quarters of the page and you usually will end up chopping off some of the text. All right, so print inside the box. You can also print over here and that'll give you just the article itself. Now, you've got Google Drive, you can send it to Google Drive for yourself. You can email the documents to yourself or the link to the document yourself. That way uh, you can have access to it on your own computer easily enough. You can put it in a folder, which simply means that while you're doing your research on the database, uh, you can store that, that link for future reference in the database itself. So when you when you go back to do your research later, you can collect the articles before you decide to print any of them. If you find one that seems interesting, you just shove it into the folder and it'll be there when you get back, okay? Um, that way you can access them more easily while you're still in the process of trying to decide which articles you actually want to read in print, okay? Uh, you also have access to citation machines here. All right, uh, export allows you to export to um, different formats. All right, I don't know, like you can send it to EasyBib for bibliography and EndNote Web um, to, to help create EndNotes using these basically citation machines. I, I don't have much of a use for any of these, but um, they're available to you. Anyway, questions so far? Mm. <clears throat> no. I have a question, but it might be irrelevant to what you're talking about. I don't know. I Let's trouble. see. <laughs> I just have trouble when I pull like stuff from the library database on how exactly to cite it. 
like on the paper. Okay. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a little separate issue. Okay. So first of all, um, when you have a source, I'm going to go, um, the old fashioned way is go into your book and find the example that works. All right. And so what we have here is we have an article from a scholarly journal. All right. And even though we're accessing it from a database, do you have your handbook with you? Yes. Okay. Hold on one second. Let me grab mine. So what we do is we first have to assess, this is the old fashioned way, all right? Uh, what kind of source we have, where we're getting it from, and then we can go find the model in the book that applies, okay? So we look on page 419. All right, we have a list of models for works cited. Now you guys are you guys are pretty good at the in-text citation. So we're talking about at the end of your paper the works cited list, all right? Right. Um, and what you've got is you've got uh, number 13 on page 419 at the bottom, an article in a journal. All right? And it would be items 13C uh, listed or found in a database, all right? So we're going to go to page 441. 441. Yeah. All right. Now, not all of your sources, I would imagine, would come from um, databases. Some of them might even come from Google or even Wiki. It depends on on what your what your what you need and what you got to find. Um, but most of your sources should be quality sources from the databases, all right? So you see on page 440 on the left, you have a nice uh, screen capture with a list of all of the items that would be expected to be found in a works cited entry for an article from a database, okay? Um, you don't always find all of that information, but for the most part, it should be readily available right on your front page, okay? So we're going to look, okay, first of all, um, first item is author, and you can see on the right-hand side, there's an example, all right, of an article from uh, published and from a database, all right, on the bottom of 440, you have the works cited entry uh, numbered along with the list and the items on the screen. So we'll go through our screen, all right, first of all, author right here, okay? Second of all, title and subtitle of our article, all right, we have the article title right here. All right, third, title of the journal, magazine, or newspaper. Now, right here, it is available right in front of us, okay? It's not always that, it's not always posted right there. Sometimes it's at the bottom of the page. Um, but the information should always be available. And for most every scholarly source or academic source, it's going to be easily, easily found because it's important to the publication that they know that you know where their information came from. A okay, volume and issue number is right here. Okay. Date of publication. Let's see. Okay, so we don't have a date of publication, all right? A lot of times, um, scholarly journals are not are not published by date. We have a year, 2018, and then a volume and issue number, and that's all we have. Right here is the page numbers. See that? Yes. Okay, so in that particular journal, um, it's not continuous. Some journals, they start the, the year on page one, and even though they have different issues, uh, the pagination is continuous for the entire year. So issue number two might start on page 150, go to page 300. Issue number three might start on page 300. Uh, some do it, some don't. 
All right. So, so it wouldn't be surprising to see really high numbers sometimes in these scholarly journals. Anyway, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. All we have is the year of publication. All right, we don't have a month and we don't have a season. It's not a quarterly, so we don't have seasons. All right, we have page numbers. Now, name of database, EBSCOhost. Okay. Yep. And then DOI. All right, the DOI is sort of like the old fashioned um, Dewey decimals in the library. You know, if you guys, if you guys, I don't know if you'd remember Eliza, but maybe, maybe you do Melissa, the old card catalogs. Yeah. <clears throat> town library, they may still have some, right? Where you go into the town library, you look in the little funny looking drawers and pull out the card. It has a number on it. These oh, are the electronic yeah. equivalent. Okay. Okay. Of those little card catalog numbers. <clears throat> So a DOI is a number now that you can use as an electronic indexing, right? So it says DOI or permalink if available, otherwise complete URL or shortened URL of the database. See item 12C, All right? So let's look at 12C back on the previous page. So on 438 at the bottom, all right, you have a complete URL. All right, and you can do that on your works cited list. It's not a big deal. It doesn't matter how much space you take up on your works cited list. All right, but the DOI is available here, so we can use that instead. Um, and it looks like in the example we have at the bottom, we have. Um, the URL. And if you look at the example on 441C at the bottom, it's using a DOI instead. All right, so that's an either or situation. The DOI is preferred if it's available. All right, but they're not always available. All right, so what you do is you just take all of those pieces of information and you put them in the order that's provided here just as they are. Um, some of the minor variations are if you have multiple authors, you, you would uh, identify multiple authors in different ways depending on how many you have. If you have no author available, you begin with number two because there is no number one. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, now a lot of these, if you look on page 419, I'm not going to go through all the different variations with you. Obviously, that would be miserable for you guys. But if you go back to 419, you can see that there are 11 different variations for how you have an author situation. Okay, you have a single author, two authors, three or more, company as author, no author, two or more works by the same author. And so this will provide you with guidelines that that reflect the situation you have with the source you're looking at. So in this particular article, we have a single author. Okay, so that's simple. Last name first, comma, first name. Okay. This is right here, item number one on page 431. So you figure out your author situation first, then you figure out your source information. And for that, we go to the next column. Item number 12 is for articles, okay, all the way down to item number 25, where it begins books and other lo longer works, okay. Uh, item number 35 begins a sequence of variations related to websites and, on and online uh, web media, okay? blogs, uh, academic course, of that sort, podcast, films, transcripts, live shows, uh, all available uh, through, um, all right, so audio, audio, video, multimedia, not just web and websites, okay? Um, government and legal documents, personal communications can even be cited if you have an email. Um, this probably is, uh, unless you guys are interviewing people, it probably won't come into play, but 
you can even cite a text message. Anything that's been published and texting is published because it is available, you know, other people can access it. Gary um, can be cited. Okay. Does that, does that answer your question in the long form, Melissa? Yes, it does. Okay, so you're going to want to use the book. If you have trouble figuring out how to cite any of these sources, um, you know, you can just ask me and we can go through it. It's not a big deal. Um, and you have the citation machines, which can also help you. So, for example, if we look here at export, uh, I'm sorry, at site, all right, you click on site. And what it's going to do is it's going to provide you with different variations of how to cite that source based on different disciplines and requirements. AMA is the, the uh, citation format for the American Medical Association. APA is the American Psychological Association. Most people, most disciplines use APA format, right? Uh, if you're in nursing, if you're in psych, if you're in business, if you're in uh, most variations of education, you're using APA, all right? In our discipline, we're using MLA, Modern Language Association. You can see it up here on the screen. Yes? Yes. All right. So um, this is essentially the citation properly formatted in MLA for the source that we're looking at on the screen here. Okay. So that's the easy version. Okay, click the cite machine and pick the right one. Uh, it doesn't teach you how to do it, but it gets it done right. Okay. 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 So hopefully that answers those questions. Um, you know, the other thing I really wanted to show you guys was about the distinction between different qualities of sources. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back a little bit to an earlier search. Take off the peer review limiter. Uh, I'm going to take off the academic journals limiter. And I had found a source. Let's see. What other limits do I have here? trying to find a particular article. Yeah, that one might do. There we go. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at two different articles. I'm going to bring them both up on the screen. If I can, all right, let's bring that one up. Download that. And then. Okay, this one doesn't look like we have full text available. Okay. All 
right, so this isn't this isn't the best one. I'm gonna try and find one more. I'm trying to find an example of a popular journal just just for the sake of um, okay that might work. Discover magazine. Here we go. Oh no, that's HTML. Sorry. Take a look at this one. This would probably be in the category of an in-between magazine. All right, this is Statesman magazine. All right, so let's just take a look at this. All right, and you can literally visibly see the differences between two different sources. I put them side by side. I'm trying really hard to get this done, guys. Okay, so the first one right on the left is a more popular magazine. You notice the first thing you see is that it's got color. Okay, it's got a drawing here. It might have might have vis visuals. It might have photographs. Um, they'll generally have color and interesting and exciting font variations, things of that sort, just to make it uh, more eye appealing. Um, this looks like a column, okay, by a columnist named Tracy Thorne. All right, so we don't know what her level of skill or expertise or knowledge is in the field of fear and in the field of driving. We have no idea. All right. Um, she's a columnist. What that means is she's an expert writer and probably not an expert in anything else. If you look at the other one, Right. First of all, instead of the magazine title, the Statesman, what is it called? New Statesman, the property of New Statesman Limited. What does that tell you? It's a private publication. Uh, and what are private companies interested in? I'll answer the question for you. Don't bother to unmute your mics. Making money. That's what they're interested in. And they make money by selling advertising space. So their objective is to simply have you interested in what they have to say. Uh, that might mean that they tell you what you want to hear. Otherwise, you won't read what they say. All right. So they're talking about things in a way that uh, you enjoy so that they can sell more papers. And that's the way they make their money. Okay, now, on the other hand, over here, all right, driving anxiety, massing, Massey University are the affiliations of the authors so that we know that they are scholars, all right? The name of the periodical is the New Zealand Journal of Psychology. It's a national scholarly publication, all right? Uh, another thing you will notice right off the bat, okay, is that this lady's article is uh, about a page long. Okay, including the graphics. This article, on the other hand, is longer, much, much longer. Okay, these are really simple indicators of the quality of a source. All right, you're also going to notice in this particular article um, the way it's sectioned. Okay, discussion, it probably has a method section. Let's see. Results. Method. Okay, so that's a scientific journal here. We've got statistical data. All right. We've got a works cited list. Okay, beginning here, references list in APA format. All right, which is a full page. All right, they've got to have 30 or so articles that are the basis of research for this particular article. Tracy Thorne, on the other hand, 
Let's see what she had to say. Why I have a hard time remembering my year of driving dangerously. I wish you could drive, Mom said my daughter to me this evening. So, I mean, you can already see the differences in the language, right? Driving anxiety can impact everyday functioning as commonly following motor vehicle crashes. However, no research is investigated. See, this one's all business, and this one is more like personal, right? Now, these are obviously drastically different sources, but if you look at simple front page things like um, the credentials of the authors, the titles of the, the magazine or the journal that you're reading, uh, the language that's presented, graphics that are provided, you can tell pretty quickly the difference between a higher quality source and a poor quality source. Um, yes? Yes, good. Yes. <laughs> Outstanding effort, you too. All right, so um, that's about what I had to show you. I, I, I don't know if you guys want me to stick around and just hang out while you do a little bit of research. Uh, if you want to try that, okay. I know that a lot of times in my my experience, I don't have any trouble doing research until I actually do some. Mm -hmm. And then it becomes difficult. So how about this? I'm going to stick around. I mean, we've got 20 minutes left of class. If you guys want to just start kind of fiddling through uh, your research and see what you come up with. If you get any, if you if you're getting frustrated, you don't have any any results at all to find, or you can't seem to narrow it down properly. We can kind of talk you through it as you're going along. Okay, uh, we could even share screen. So I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, get out of the screen share here in a second, unless you guys have any other questions about what I've shown you before we split. Good. Yes. Yeah. Bored. A little bit. A little bit bored. I'm really sorry. <laughs> I, I feel it's my responsibility to go through some of this stuff, and hopefully, you caught something that might be useful in your research. Uh, now it really boils down to your keywords. You know, um, if you have effective keywords, you're going to find good sources. If you compile them and connect them properly and have good filters on, you're going to find what you're looking for more than likely. Okay. All right. So I'm going to hang out. All right. Silently. I'm going to shut my microphone off. I'm going to get out of this screen sharing. And if, oh, Tatanisha's here. You didn't notice her? I'm also going to shut off the recorder. Stop.